Jacob, Burnley fan, uh, I'm guessing you came into this with high expectations there tonight. What did you think of your team's performance, yeah. first of all? Well, going into it, I was, I honestly was fully confident we could be able to get something. Obviously, then we look at the team that we'll be able to put out. We've got a lot of players missing uh, with Nathan Teller, Vitinho, Zaruri still yet to come back from the World Cup. So I think that did massively affect the result of the game. We had Ashley Barnes playing up front. He league one standard at best, really. So I did think that changed the complex of the game. I think if we had our full squad out, we probably could have competed a bit more, but I do still think we did well. It was up until the final third, I'd say we're on par with United for a lot of the game, up until it came to that final third, which obviously you took your chances. I don't think you created loads, but the chances you did have, you put away very well, whereas we were sat putting chances left, right and centre, which against a team like Man United, you can't, you can't do. Yeah, that's it. I mean, when you've seen United's lineup, you've seen Dubravka in goal, Wan Bazaka first game, first start all season, Casemiro at centre back. Are you disappointed that you didn't go for it more and challenge us a little bit more? I think the problem was, like I said, I think with Wan Bazaka, I think I was very happy when I saw Wan Bazaka on the team sheet, to be honest. You know, I, I know a lot of United fans don't rate him. I've got a few United friends myself who really don't rate him. And to be honest, I don't really rate him as well. You know, you got the Wan Bazaka chop. I was hoping I might see that. Um, but I think. We could have taken advantage of a lot more errors there. Dubravka was awful, I thought. He was absolutely shocking. Uh, I think that was shown from the chance Scott Twine got when he did take it off Dubravka. And we didn't we didn't capitalise on it. I think that, that's the end, end, end of the story, really. Burnley didn't capitalise on the mistakes they got from Man United, which there was there was plenty, you know. Um, and I think going up, uh, if we're looking at going up next season, they really need to be stamped out. Because tonight was a massive opportunity and we were given massive opportunities to show ourselves. And I don't think we did it as much as we've done this season. Yeah, Burnley's always been a bit of a bogey team for United over the years. I've had many a bad memories. One last season on a rainy night down at Turf Moor. Uh, from that team that you watched there to what United have been this season, tonight, did anyone sort of stand out or look different from what you've seen from United, say, last season for you? I've got to say Marcus Rashford is a different class to be honest. Watching Rashford, I've always, I've always liked Rashford other than I'll be honest that when when he had went through that dry spell, I did think you know he might he might kind of disappear like a lot. You see a lot of young players do, but I think he's done really well to come back. And I think tonight he was the difference maker. That second goal, whereas yes, there was loads of empty space, but he did so well to then take the man on like he did. He ran from the halfway line, an unbelievable finish. Um, I think. Bruno Fernandes was, was pretty horrific in my opinion. I think I, I like him today. Nah, nah, I thought the whole game, he did his things of dropping to the floor, trying to win fouls, and the referee ate straight into it. You have to get it. used to that next season. Yeah, right? that's what I mean. Coming <laughs> up, you go back to playing against the big six club, you get the referees eating it up. But um, I think he brought, he, the amount of passes he, he, he misplaced and stuff like that, uh, I, I don't really see what United fans seem to rave about him. I didn't think Martial was okay as well, but. I expect a little bit more from Martial. I'm one of his biggest fans, really. As much as I'm a Burnley fan, I do love Martial. Um, but yeah, I think overall, I thought United were pretty mediocre. Um, I, don't, I don't think there were levels above above how we played. Um, but yeah, Rashford was Rash, Rashford was top. That was the one there. I mean, you said it there. If we come up next season, I'm pretty confident you will come up next season for you and your fans. I mean. I so I'm from the outside, obviously looking in like you are with United they are Fins and Company seems to have changed the complete outlook of how you play football. Uh are you loving what you're seeing? Do you feel like you can bring that into the Premier League with the plays you've got? Or if you are going to play like that in the Premier League, do you feel like you're going to need investment to go along with it? Yeah, I think that Burnley's buzzing at the moment. I don't think I've ever seen the fan base like this. We're selling out the turf like it's nothing. We didn't do that in the Premier 7, League. 7,000 there tonight, mate. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a big turnout and I think it, it, it really shows Vincent Company and Alan Pace as well, obviously owner coming in not too long ago. It's really shown what Burnley are about. The fans are connected with the players finally once again. Um, and I think under Sean Dyche, uh, great manager and everything, but the social media side was not really intact, which I did think it disconnected the fans almost from the club. We didn't see a lot of the team. Um, and I think now we've got young players coming through, young players constantly communicating with the club. You got like, for example, like Ian Matson, you know, doing live videos of fans and stuff like that. And it really gets the club going. So I think a lot of our performance this season is coming off the back of the feel at the club. You know, the fans are buzzing and all the players have said the fans getting behind them really does influence games. Um, I think if we're going to go up in summer, we're going to need an, nine players in really, not for the starting 11, I do think we need to splash big on a holder midfielder, spend big on a striker, uh, a centre-half to come in because a lot of people are raving about Taylor Harwood Bellis, but I don't think he's good enough to play in the Premier League yet. However, Jordan Bayer would have to go and trigger his loan clause. We've got Nathan Teller would probably have to trigger his loan clause if we went up. Uh, but we also 
alongside that we've got some players who I think are Premier League quality already I mean you look at Manuel Benson tonight he was class uh, until he got that injury which he has been troubled with a couple injuries this season when he first came in to England he didn't look like he'd be able to cope with it against Watford and a lot of people got on his back straight away uh, alongside that Anna Saruri as well a brilliant player Anna Saruri I think we massively missed tonight one on one I'd, I think we would have torn United, that, that, that wing apart at United today and I think we massively did miss him um, but yeah I would like to suspend if we go up if they play the, the company style you know that, that passing out from the back it's very similar to a, to a Man City Pep style has been compared to a lot I think we probably have to spend 60 million at least to stay up because you saw tonight we got dominated in the midfield and again going to United away you've got to try and keep a hold of a midfield a midfield battle as soon as you lose it the game's done yeah and before you go Jacob Burnley and Blackburn to come back up to the Prem? Oh, no chance. <laughs> nah, Blackburn. <laughs> yeah, they'll be lucky to stay up, won't they? <laughs> uh, Jacob, absolute pleasure. Cheers for yeah, coming cheers on, mate. mate. Yeah, thanks for having us.